Hi, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. Today is November 15th, 2023. I produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the Bias Plus Reports, and this is Ben and Barry on football. What's going on out there, everybody? This is Ben Dickerson. I'm your co-host. Still haven't hit my goal yet. I was nine and five on my picks from last week for last week's game games. Um, but I'm still here. I'm going to try again this week. So you had nine right and five wrong. Correct. Exactly what the uh, what the bias had also. Okay. But the same games or not? But. That's no, we didn't turn out to be. Um, so what's that? Nine out of uh, nine to five is 14, right? Yep. So that would be, let's see here. 64%. Not too, too bad. No, it's not bad. It's just not up to my standards. All right. <laughs> I'm getting it. Well, <clears throat> Very interesting week last week. Um, we both, again, uh, had five games missed out of that. Um, at the end of the uh, presentation, when we do the bias plus, we'll talk about who the bias buster was last week. But the intriguing game of the week, Benny, how crazy was it that I smelled upset with the Broncos? <laughs> and not the, too crazy but good call good call and you know again it it you kind of perked my ears on something when you reminded me that they had beaten the chiefs so if you right. beat you know the former super bowl champion you know and your defense is showing up all of a sudden which hadn't really been you know had been a little not not there um then it's a question of whether or not What's going on in the, with the Bills is going to affect them during the game. They fired the offensive coordinator. Yes. Had they not had 12 men on the field, they would have won that game. <laughs> okay. And so, the offensive coordinator would have stayed, and they turned the ball over four times, and they can't fix their running game. It's time for them to go. I'd have fired both of them. Well, maybe that might have been, you know, that might have been, but you know, I don't know if I'm if I. The running game is a question. We'll talk a little more about that. The interceptions. I don't know if I'd fire the the, the uh, offensive coordinator because um, he's just who he is. Josh is just who he is, and I don't know how much that's going to change. I don't care who you put in there, you know. So Ben, let's talk about the bias plus reports. Uh, for the upcoming week, we got some games to look at, and I'm going to bring those up. And that would include the teams on the bye, the Falcons, the Colts, the Patriots, and the Saints. So for you fantasy guys out there, from what I understand, that's important information to know so you can get your fantasy act together. Um, but... There you go. Those are the, the teams that are on the bye. Any any uh, thing to say about these bye teams? Uh, I mean, guys that have been kind of living off of the Saints defense or uh, B. John Robinson who plays for the Falcons, there's not too much going on here. This isn't too brutal of a week for most fantasy uh, guys. Uh, there, there's There's not a bunch of must start players, as we call them, in this group of teams. Yeah, like I think last week you were talking about must start players. Oh, last week was brutal. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit different, a little bit different. Yeah, and you're right. When I look across the Saints, the Colts, the Saints probably have the most, wouldn't you say? A lot of people have been playing the Saints defense. Yeah. And uh, Chris Olave. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Chris Olave. And Kamara. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big – I'm a Kamara fan. And I always told you he reminds me of uh, – what's the name that's with the Browns? <laughs> Tobacco running back with the Browns. Um, Green Hunt? Yeah, yeah. They remind me of each other. All right, next up, Bengals at Ravens. This is the first game. The Ravens have a bias plus score of 16.4 in their favor over the Bengals. 
Bengals just came off of uh, a loss, right? If I'm not mistaken. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, before I get started, one, two, three, four, five teams this past weekend won games with last-minute drives and time-expiring field goals. The Bengals have to go to Baltimore and play the Ravens this upcoming weekend. Both teams played very well offensively in their games last week, but both teams somehow snatched defeat from the jaws of victory when their opponents were able to put together last-minute drives and kicked last-second field goals. So both these teams were victim to one of those five teams whose names I didn't mention, but you'll hear them as we go along. First off, Cincinnati on a four-game win streak hosted the Houston Texans. Joe Burrow's been playing really well, and he did so again in this game. He threw for 347 yards. Real nice day. Two touchdowns, but unfortunately, he tossed two interceptions, and he threw them in the fourth quarter, and both of them killed drives. Even still, Bengals cornerback Cam Taylor Britt intercepted C.J. Stroud, and with 3.18 left, Joe Mixon scored on a one-yard run. The defense held. They forced a punt, but Tyler Boyd, on the next possession for the Cincinnati Bengals, dropped a pass in the end zone, and the Bengals had to settle for a field goal, which, you know, a touchdown would have put them ahead. The field goal ended up tying the game at 27. With a minute 33 left, C.J. Stroud engineered one last drive for the Texans and the game-winning field goal, winning the game 30-27. So the four-game win streak by the Bengals went by the wayside to the Houston Texans. Now, as far as the, Ra as the Ravens are concerned, they opened up their scoring in their game against the Browns when safety Kyle Hamilton intercepted Deshaun Watson 40 seconds into the game, it was the first drive, and ran it back for pick six. Undrafted rookie Keith Mitchell, who I mentioned to you last week, yes, another Mitchell, Keith Mitchell, that a lot of people grabbed up on his first touch of the game, went 39 yards for a score, making the score 14 to nothing. Somehow, some way, though, strangely, later in the game, he was on the sideline. I can't figure out why. Uh, I know they love Gus, Gus Edwards, but this guy, Keith Mitchell, is, is something special right now. Um, let me see. Let's, five minutes of the game, yes. Five minutes had gone by. Keith Mitchell scores, and they run back an interception. Now, Lamar Jackson threw for 223 yards. He hit Odell Beckham with a 40-yard touchdown pass and run. It was a long run. He hit him down the middle. It was a nice run for Odell. He hasn't been doing a whole lot, but that was a good catch and score for him. Uh, that happened in the third quarter. That extended the Ravens' lead to 24-9. to nine. Kareem Hunt then scored on a three-yard run for the Browns after a 75-yard drive. But after some back and forth and a few penalties, the Ravens scored again on a Gus Edwards run, making the score 31-17. And here's where it got crazy. After that, the wheels kind of fell off for the Ravens. A touchdown pass by Watson, a pick six, and a game-winning field goal with no time left on the clock sealed the Ravens' fate 33-31. to Really, two, two really bad losses uh, for two really good teams. One that's been pretty much running the division, the AFC North being the Ravens. The other, the Bengals, who got off to a slow start, but they really, really have been coming on strong and looking really hot. Now the Bengals have to go into the Ravens kind of licking their wounds. I'm going to take the Ravens at home in this game. I think the Bengals surely will play hard because they can't afford to lose. If they lose another game, they could seal their fate for the playoffs. But, so I expect this to be a really good game. This actually will be an intriguing game candidate. 
um, something for you to think about. But I'm going to pick the Ravens to win this one. Very interesting um, matchup here. You're absolutely right in terms of being an intriguing possibility. Both of them, you know, looking pretty good. I was surprised that the Ravens lost that game, to be quite honest, which I was just, guess I was on that, on that Lamar ship that was looked like it was like sailing. And it didn't look like anything was going to stop it. The defense was, was handling their business. You know, Lamar looked good. So, you know, you're going to go with the Ravens. Ravens. Going yes. to go with the Ravens here over Going the with the bias. Going with the bias. Okay, let's see what we got next. Bears at Lions. Oh, my. Bias plus score 13.3 favors the Lions. And, I mean, that kind of makes sense. The Bears are, oh, wait. We might have the return of Mr. Fields. Am I correct? Well, that, yes, I believe that is a strong possibility, much stronger than it was last week. His name did get mentioned last week, but this week I think we should see him. Okay, okay. So what you got? Well, uh, before this season, when the Bears acquired D.J. Moore from the Carolina Panthers, they also acquired Carolina's first-round draft pick, wherever it happened to fall. By them beating the Carolina Panthers, who they played last week, that kind of almost darn near assured Carolina to finish with the worst record in the league. Lions at Chargers last week was a possible intriguing game of the week for me. It was one of my candidates for the intriguing game of the week. I would have had no problem with it at all if you had picked that game for sure. I figured it had to be possible it had the possibility of being a high scoring game but it actually turned out to be better than I thought it was going to be. If you asked me what team won without me telling you the name of the team, I would tell you it was the team with the most balanced offense and the team that didn't commit any turnovers. That would be the Lions. They won the game by a score of 41 to 38. This was a real good game. An offensive showcase. Jared Goff threw the ball 33 times, and he handed it off or pitched it to a bat or a receiver 31 times. You can't get much more balanced than that. Goff completed 23 for 333 yards and two touchdowns. David Montgomery ran for 116 in a score. Jameer Gibbs, the rookie, went for 77 yards and two scores. The best part of a very exciting game was the cold-blooded decision-making of Lions head coach Dan Campbell. Screw analytics, buddy. With the score tied at 38 and a minute 47 left in regulation, Detroit faced a fourth and two at the Chargers' 26-yard line. They could have easily kicked the field goal. And let's face it, most coaches would take that. It was a 44-yarder, very makeable from an NFL kicker. It would have given them the lead by three and leave it on their defense to stop Justin Herbert from bringing the Chargers back for the win or maybe taking the game in overtime. 147 left in the game. What would you do? <laughs> You're really asking me that question. Be, be honest. <laughs> All right, let's read through the situation again. 147 okay. left in the game. There's 147 left in the game. The score is tied score at is 30. Tied. The score, I'm going to say this maybe to give you a hint. The score is tied at 38. It's 38-38. 147 left. You have the ball on your opponent's 26-yard line. It's fourth and two. I remember what they. I remember what they did. Right. And, uh, I it's a, generally. It's a very makeable field goal. Yeah, I generally take the points. You know, I, I generally take the points, and and I know it, it's funny. I when they go for it, there's a machismo. There's a you know, I'm gonna you know, we're gonna do this thing. You know. 
There's a machismo if it's fourth and one. Fourth and two, I'm kicking the field goal. <laughs> I got to be honest. But the thing <laughs> I was going to say about the machismo is that's what gets portrayed. But when you right. listen to them, they're really scared that their defense can't stop the other team. Okay, and that was the hint I was throwing you. The score was 38 to 38. Neither team had stopped the other. The other. <laughs> so we know it was in his mind. Minute 47, and they had one timeout left, I believe. So he's saying, you know, if I kick this field goal, we go up three, and then this guy drives them back down. Justin Herbert we're talking about. Drives them back down. They kick a field goal, take us to overtime, or they score and beat us. So what does he do? He decides to go for the fourth and two, and they throw a six-yard pass to the tight end who catches it, gets the first down. They take three knees, make the Chargers use their timeout, send in the kicker, and then kicks the game winner as time expires. Cojones. Okay. That's all I got to say about that one. Cojones. That's what I said. It, it's, normally, it's normally seen as being a very uh, you know, macho thing. Like you say, cojones, all of that kind of stuff. You know, but he didn't want to send Well, him. I didn't want to say balls, but. Yeah, he didn't want to send it. He didn't want to send his defense out there, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no, not at all. But anyway, um, Lions at home against the Bears, that's a pretty easy call there. I got to go with Lions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Bears are uh, a struggling franchise right now. But you didn't mention Justin Fields. You don't think he's going to come back and make a uh, difference? That's not going to make a difference. <laughs> Lions are far better than the Bears. Far better. That this, if I tell you what, if the Bears win, I will give them extra credit next week. That will be an upset of astronomical proportions. The, uh, the difference, yeah, the difference between these two teams is night and day. The only thing I'll say really, really quickly is the Lions' defense. We were pretty proud of what they had been doing. Yes. But lately, they looks like they're closer to last year's defense. Okay, Benny. So next up, we have the Cardinals at the Texans. Bias West score of 14.3 favors the Texans. But Kyler Murray came back last week with a vengeance. People yes, were like saying he don't look like he was ever injured. He's as quick as ever. Boy, was he quick. Sheesh. <laughs> Kyler Murray, back from injury, he used his arm and his legs to drive the Cardinals to victory over Atlanta, 25-23. Now, Murray threw one interception, but he did score a touchdown on the ground, and his backup scored a touchdown on the ground. Clayton Toon came in to score on a tush push for the Cardinals. And that provided all of the scoring they needed besides the four field goals they got from their kicker, Matt Prater, who I had in fantasy on a couple of teams who actually won games for me with those four field goals. Very nice, Matt Prater. Thank you very much. Uh, second year tight end, Trey McBride, who fantasy people have been running out to grab. I actually had Trey McBride and traded him for uh, a future draft pick to a player that had Kyler Murray on their team, uh, on their fantasy team. And that person actually came back and started him and beat me in a fantasy game. I don't regret, I'm, I'm not happy about losing the game, but I don't regret the trade because I can use that draft pick in next year's draft. But I digress. Um, Trey McBride's been emerging ever since he took over for Zach Ertz when he, Zach Ertz when he got hurt. Um, Joshua Dobbs threw a lot of balls to Trey McBride. He's the one that kind of got him going. And Kyler Murray has uh, obviously observed what this guy can do 
and continued to go to him. He caught eight passes for 131 yards. And running back James Conner, who's been out some weeks with an injury, also came back, ran 73 yards on 16 carries. So nice job uh, winning that game by the Cardinals and getting their injured guys back and healthy. Um, now, mark down my vote for C.J. Stroud for Rookie of the Year. This guy, I'm telling you, man, this guy is nothing but amazing. Week after week, he keeps on getting it done. He went 23 of 39 for 356 yards, one touchdown. He did throw one interception, and he had a touchdown on the ground. Devin Singletary had 30 carries for 150 yards. When I see a back get 30 carries, I know that team is dedicated to the run game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Right about that. Yards and Devin Singletary scored a touchdown. And I'll tell you what, Devin Singletary does not look like the Devin Singletary that played for the Buffalo Bills. I will tell you that. More fodder for the cannon for firing that OC. This game was a battle, but when Tyler Boyd dropped the pass in the end zone and the Bengals had to settle for a field goal that tied the game, Instead of a touchdown that would have put them ahead, that allowed C.J. Stroud to put together one last drive, went 55 yards in six plays, and set up rookie field goal kicker Matt Amendola for a 38-yarder as time expired. Another game won in the last final seconds off of a last-minute drive. Texans are at home. Cardinals looked great last week, but the Texans, they're not going to lose that game. I'm picking the Texans to win that game at home. You know, all of a sudden, this seems to me to be a bit intriguing. Cardinals, Texans? Yeah, mainly because of the return of Kyler. Okay. It's like a wild card. And, and true, true. I looked, huh? I said that's very true. When I looked defensively at these two teams one thing that struck me is over the last three weeks they are only 0.7 points apart in their what their defense has allowed okay in other words when i'm saying houston has allowed 26.3 points per game and arizona has allowed 27. Mm -hmm. now the challenge with arizona is scoring points you know, Houston's putting up the points. Arizona hasn't. That's where the, the intrigue about Kyler Murray coming back and whether or not now Arizona can become a better point production team. So we'll have to see how that goes. But for right now, the bias is big. It looks it favors the Texans. Well, it's, it's nice size. It's healthy. You know, it's not like 20 and 30 points and all of that. But it favors the Texans. So we'll keep an eye out on that. This, this is a possible intriguing game for me, Benny. I have to admit. I have to admit. Now, I, I, I will say in the Texas defense, um, the last couple of games where they've given up, you know, X number of points, the competition's been a bit tougher than what the Cardinals faced. At least in the last two weeks. I'm not going to go back three. But – all to right. me, that's the difference. Quality, quality does does have right a quality opponents. Quality, okay, we'll see. Going with the Texans, going with the bias. Cowboys at Panthers. Bias plus score of twenty four point seven favors the Cowboys. Uh, <laughs> Cowboys is on the roll, and they love to beat up on weaker teams. So if you have that's to what be, they do, if you have to be a weaker team. Watch out. That's what they boys. do. Yeah, you can you can say what you want about the Dallas Cowboys, but besides a shocking loss to Arizona a few weeks back, they've won every other game they were expected to win, and most of the games they won were in devastating fashion. They did again against the Giants, my Giants. They won the game 49 to 17. How we got 17, I'm still not sure, but they put up 49 really tough points on us. Uh, Dak threw for four touchdowns, and he ran for one. The running game was very sturdy. 
accounting for 168 yards total and another two touchdowns from the backs. C.D. Lamb continues to look unstoppable. He had 11 catches for 151 yards and a touchdown. Um, the defense also continues to look superior, which we kind of expected coming into the season. Um, in this game, they had seven quarterback hits, five sacks, seven tackles for loss, and one interception. So, yeah, Cowboys. I tell you, if the Cowboys ain't the most hated team in the NFL, yet they keep smacking the haters back every chance they get. Um, now. <laughs> Uh, now that Kyler Murray's back with Arizona, I believe the Carolina Panthers are the odds-on favorites to finish the season with the worst record. They just lost to the Chicago Bears, giving them their third, giving the Bears their third win on the season. So the Bears have three wins. The Panthers have one. Uh, in this game, Amir Smith Marset returned a punt 79 yards for a touchdown in the first quarter. And then after that, Bryce Young only generated 185 yards through the air. They only produced 43 yards on the ground. Um, the kick return and two field goals by their field goal kicker made the score 16-13. Very poor showing by Carolina. They showed some promise in some games a few weeks ago. But since then, they've looked really, really bad. Poor Frank Reich. I feel sorry for him right now. Um, I think he went in there with really good intentions, but boy, you know, when Bryce Young is the first pick overall and then CJ Stroud is like the next pick as far as quarterbacks is concerned and he's playing as well as he is and Bryce, I don't want to say Bryce Young isn't playing well, but he's not, I, I, I don't want to say it. Because it's not just him. It's the team as a whole. But it, it makes you question whether they made the right pick or not. I guess only time will tell as they begin to rebuild their team. Anyway, um, Carolina fans, look out. Cowboys are on their way in there. And I believe Dallas will demolish the Panthers on their home field. You know, interestingly, on my spreadsheet, the Texans and the Panthers are like right of right next to each other. So it's easy to compare the results. Right. Just quickly, net points. Texans are 10th with plus 2.8. Panthers are 31st with minus 9.9. Big difference. Scoring. Texans also 10th, putting up 24.1 points per game. Panthers are 29th. They're putting up 17 <laughs> points per game. Defense, Texans are 16th, allowing 21.3 points. Panthers are 30th, allowing 26.9 points. And then in turnover differential, Texans are 7th with plus 0 0.4. And Panthers are 27th with <laughs> minus 0 0.4. So... The Panthers are 31st ranked, 29th ranked, 30th ranked, and 27th ranked in the four uh, categories that we, we look at very closely. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see in the future if we look back now and say, oh, we thought that, you know, Bryce wasn't going to make it, and then he turned out to be great. You know, I somehow, you know, I don't I don't get that feeling. I just think, again, I think I said it last week, and, I, and I'll just repeat it, and we can move on. Bryce has to be very good to overcome his size issues. I mean, he's got to be good, good, you know. So we'll see. You know, he's got a lot going for him. I've seen him do some really, you know, he's savvy and all of that kind of stuff. He's quick. He, he's got more of an arm than what you might think for a guy's yeah. size, you know. So I'm giving him all of that. Yeah, I agree. I've just seen guys running by him, grabbing with one arm, and he's down. <laughs> he knows. Yeah, he he he. It's it's funny. We sort of kind of question Kyler Murray a little bit too, but Kyler Murray is is he? I would venture to guess that he weighs more than Bryce Young. He's probably a little shorter, 
but weighs more, is far more sturdy physically and absolutely has the speed and quickness that Bryce Young does not have. So that's some extra attributes that a guy like Kyler Murray at his size has that Bryce Young doesn't have. But it, we're going to have to wait and see how the Panthers do and kind of going through their little rebuild here as to whether Bryce can improve as they improve the talent around him. From what I understand, what they're saying about Bryce is he's about 5'10", and they're talking like a buck 80-something. Yeah, he's he's real. Look at his arms. His arms are skinny. Kyler Murray is 5'10", also. Right. He's 207. There you go. That's a big difference. <laughs> that is a big difference. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So Kyler Murray is running back side. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, all right, there you go. Going with the Cowboys, going with the bias next up. Yes, sir. Giants at the, come on, Benny, say it with me, stick your chest out. The Commanders, bias plus four, score, excuse me, bias plus score of 9.5 favors the Commanders. Come As on. it should. As it should. <laughs> my team stinks. Oh, my God. That's all I really have to say. But I will try to be professional and give you a couple of their few positives uh, that they had in the blowout loss to Dallas. Quarterback Tommy DeVito, despite only throwing for 86 yards. This is an NFL professional football game. They threw for 86 yards, but somehow he managed to throw two touchdown passes. Who knew? Saquon ran hard for 66 yards on 13 carries. Of course, after a while, you just don't even want to bother to give him the ball anymore because you're so far behind. Um, th that's crazy. Uh, as far as the command is concerned, Make no mistake about it. Sam Howell did his part to secure a win over the Seattle Seahawks or to try to secure a win over the Seattle Seahawks. In a straight-up passing duel with Geno Smith, he was 29 of 44, 312 yards, three touchdowns. He needed every bit of it because they couldn't run the ball at all. Seahawks shut their run game down. He did throw one interception and down one score in the fourth quarter. He connected with Diami, Diami uh, Brown. I, don't, I never know if his name is Diami or Diami. I think it's Diami Brown. That tied the game at 26 with 52 seconds left. But the defense couldn't slow down Geno Smith, who completed a couple of big passes to DK Metcalf and kicker Jason Myers. Uh, got close enough uh, by way of Geno's drive uh, to end the game with a field goal, 29-26, as time expired. You're going to hear that five times tonight. Field goal as time expired. So the commanders lost another tough game. They've already lost a few tough games. This was another. However, they will be at home, and they will be hosting the New York Giants, who stink. Take the commanders. Well, again, I think we got a situation, Benny, where the the um, defenses are actually equitable. Um, commanders are actually 31st ranked, giving up 27.4 points per game. And your Giants are 29th, giving up 26.6. So they're actually better <laughs> defensively than the commanders. Uh, <laughs> it's the scoring where you got the issues. So if, oh, God. if Mr. DeVito can can call out all the DeVito clan and come in force and, and put some points up, is he going to be your quarterback this coming week? DeVito? I don't see why not. Who else I, we got? I understand he played a lot of college football at a pretty high level. Okay. <laughs> okay. Enough of that. <laughs> That does nothing for me right now. 
Titans at Jaguars. Bias, bias, bias plus score of 5.2. I couldn't get out of that uh, accent there. Bias plus two favors the Jaguars. Hmm. 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 So who we got? Who we got coach? Who we got uh, quarterback in the Titans now? Is it still Will? Uh, Will Levis, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> That's going to be his new name, Still Will. Still Will. <laughs> <laughs> This is a little bit of a uh, this is a little tricky game here. Jags are at home. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about the Titans. Tennessee's defense got thoroughly embarrassed by Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last week. And Will Levis and the Tennessee offense got dominated by the Bucs defense. Plain and simple. That's how that game went. 199 through the air and 42 on the ground, 24 by Derrick Henry. Are you kidding me? 24 yards from Derrick Henry, and you're trying to win a game with a rookie quarterback? Not going to happen. Will Levis got hit 13 times, 13 times. He got sacked four times. Kicker Nick Folk provided the only scoring for the Tennessee Titans in that game with two field goals, and they lost the game 20 to 6. Poor, poor showing. But you want to talk about poor showings? The Jags coming off a of bye and at home got totally embarrassed. This game threw me for a loop. <laughs> this game threw me for a loop. And you know, I like your team, I like the Niners. But I had no idea this game was going to go like this. They got totally embarrassed in a mistake-filled 34-3 loss to the Niners. And when I say mistake-filled, I mean mistakes by the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence committed three of the four turnovers they had. And Christian Kirk, the wide receiver, best wide receiver they have right now, evidently because Calvin Ridley all of a sudden Forgot how to run routes and catch the ball. Had several plays he wished he could have taken back. Christian Kirk alone overthrew Travis Etienne on a trick play in the second quarter. Let a punt bounce that ended up getting down on the one-yard line also in the second quarter. And in the third quarter, he lost a fumble. Mistake after mistake, after mistake. Talk about a team needing a bounce back. That would be the Jacksonville Jaguars. But I believe the Titans will provide a get-right game for them, so I'm going to pick the Jags. Yeah, I was I, – I did not expect the, the victory to be like it was no. dominating. I thought that was going to be a good game. That's I really did, and I, not only was it not a good game, it was a horrible game for the Jaguars. It, it, I have uh, the one uh, picture on my uh, timeline of uh, Chase Young and and uh, Bosa meeting at the quarterback. <laughs> you know, but um, we're gonna see a I, lot of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting to see, and from what I understand, you had a couple other things you had. Well, number one, our defensive coordinator came down from the booth, you know, and I think he kind of felt the difference. He he talked about it, and from what I understand, they made some de some adjustments in the defensive backfield. So okay, they they put a a, a, a couple people back there that had been kind of sitting on the bench, but uh, had some some real talent. So I, I'm glad to see that they were using so because I've used them a number of those backs on Madden, and I know you know, what they can do. And so it's going to be interesting to see with these adjustments, you know, as we go forward in some of the tougher games, I'm really looking forward to it. But for this game, you are going with the Jaguars, right? Correct. Going with the Jags, going with the Bias. Steelers at Browns. Bias plus score of 1.8 favors the Browns. So right now the Browns uh, in a little bit of upheaval. Their starting quarterback is hurt. The Steelers, uh, people are still trying to figure out how they're doing what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I'll let you explain it. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out too. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I have an idea though. Okay. So uh, let's get this Browns thing out of the way. The Browns are back home after a big win over division rival Baltimore. That was a huge win for them. Unfortunately, they lost their quarterback for the year. So we're going to be back to uh, our guy, uh, TJ Walker from Temple. Um, no, I think they're going with Dorian, some, some, something, or something like that. No, they're not. Yeah, they're going with the rookie. Are you serious? You heard that? They're going with the rookie. This is what I understand. Oh, my God. All right. Okay. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> you go ahead. I'm going to say, anyway. grab something on the online for you. You go ahead. Okay. So, so the Browns started off slow. They picked it up in the second half after three Dustin Hopkins field goals in the first half. Deshaun Watson led a third quarter, 10 minute, 17 play, 75 yard drive. That's big time. 10 minute drive, 17 plays. They went 75 yards and they capped it off with a three yard Kareem Hart. Uh, Kareem Hunt run. Then in the fourth quarter, Watson hit Elijah Moore for a touchdown. Cornerback Greg Newsom scored on a pick six. And then Dustin Hopkins made a 40-yarder with no time left in the game. Yeah, here we go again with another game-winning field goal. This one by Dustin Hopkins to finish them off 33-31. to Finish off the Ravens, that is, 33-31. Real hurt piece for the Ravens. Big win for the Browns, especially now that they've lost their quarterback. They stack another win before that happens. So good for them. Oh, gosh. Dorian Thompson, right? Well, maybe not. Excuse me. Maybe not, Benny. Um, I don't – I, I got to go P.J. Walker, man. I'm sorry. NBC News, NBC Sports is saying – uh, the job now falls to P.J. Walker with rookie Dorian Thompson Robinson as the backup. There you go. Okay. So okay. Thompson Robinson. That's yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go with that, that for right now. That's All right, that's good. I, I I feel a little bit better about the Browns on that now. Okay. I like P.J. I like P.J. P.J.'s paid his dues. You know, remember he was forced to start down there in Carolina for some time. Right. He took his he took his lumps down there. So I and and he did pretty good, even though I don't think he actually won a game. Uh, did he win a game while Deshaun was hurt? Mm. He might have won one. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I have to go back and check that. But anyway, the six and three Steelers have won games they seem to be outplayed in, and they've won games they've literally been outgained in. <laughs> they they have won, they've been outgained yardage wise by the other team every single game this year if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Yeah, right, right. I see it. In fact, all six of their wins have been by eight points or less. That's crazy. Case in point, they beat the Packers 23-19. Last weekend, they were outgained 405 yards for the Packers to 331 yards by the Steelers, but they still won. Here's the difference. They weren't outgained on the ground. They went to their run game. They had success with their run game against the Packer defense, and they stuck with it. Najee Harris ran for 82 yards and a touchdown. Jalen Warren ran for 101 yards and another touchdown. Safety Keanu Neal intercepted a Jordan Love pass in the end zone to kill a scoring threat with 320 left. Kicker Chris Boswell connected on three field goals and safety DeMonte Casey picked off a pass in the end zone to end the game. Man, what a way to end the game. Now, one of the keys to their success is they don't turn the ball over. 
Let me ask you, where are they on the turnover differential list? Pittsburgh the Steelers. Steelers are second. Ah, there you 1. have it. Point one. They're plus 1.1 in the average turnover differential. There you have it. They get takeaways. They do not turn the ball over. Kenny Pickett, for all the stuff people say about him, protects the football. They don't fumble. They don't throw picks. But they get them. That's the key to their success. And what did you say their record was? They're like six and three. So they're six and three. Yes. But they're minus 2.9 in net points. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's crazy. They're scoring 17.3 points a game, but they're giving up 20 uh, yeah. points per game. And in the last few weeks, uh, what's this? Well, they're not doing much better. They're actually doing a little bit worse. They're scoring 18 points a game. So, yeah, it's about defense and turnovers for them guys for sure. Exactly. You know? Because the bottom line is they're winning games. Now they go into Cleveland and catch the Browns, as great as their defense is, with a backup quarterback. This is a tough one. I have to respect what the Steelers have been doing. I really do. But doggone it. <laughs> Both teams have dominating um, defensive ends, too. Yes, yes. But the Browns have a better defense overall. Is that, Am I correct in saying that as far as the Browns, again? Yeah, and you know, the Browns, a lot of the Browns' defensive – uh, stats when they talk about them, they're, they're using some of the other stats, you know, the uh, that we don't stacks and but they are rated six, only allowing uh, 18.9 points per game. Okay, and we uh, know the Steelers are giving up points. Well, the Steelers, to be quite honest, are ranked 11th, they're giving Ooh. up 20 points a game, not that much, you know, not that Ooh. much difference. It's just they got to put a few more points up. Because, like I said, the Browns are allowing 18 and the Steelers are scoring 17. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Talk yeah. about an intriguing game. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh. this has got to be it, bro. This is division, right? This, and it's division. You this you got to make this one the intriguing game. <laughs> you, this is a must. <laughs> I can't pick this game. 1.8. A bias plus score of less than two favors the Browns. Oh, my goodness a, gracious. A, a, a flip of the coin, as they might say. Browns coming off a big win against Baltimore, lose their starting quarterback. Whew. I will say this. Baltimore kind of was having their way with them in the first half. They did jump on them. Yeah, Baltimore defense, I don't know what they did. They went home for the second half. Yeah, they they they, they it's like they packed it in. Yeah. Now the, the Steelers themselves are not known for fast starts, though. Ah. Who has okay. a good game? I, I, I know how to make up my mind. Where okay. are the Browns in the turnover rankings? The Browns in the turnover rankings are 25th. Oh! Minus 0. 0.4. And again, the Steelers are second. I'm taking the Steelers. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm taking the Steelers. Uh, oh, I'm taking the Steelers for the upset. Going against the bias, going with the Steelers. Steelers. Yeah. Again, Brown's got a backup quarterback coming in, so I can't I can't blame you. I kind of I'm feeling the Steelers a little bit here, no doubt. Uh -huh. All right, here we go. Going against the bias. Next up, next up, next up. Chargers at Packers. And the bias plus score of 8.2, Benny, favors the Chargers. Ooh, we Packers moving the ball around a little bit last week, wasn't they? All right, so we 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 talked about the Chargers game uh, with the uh, Lions, and what a barn burner that game was. So let me let me give it to you from the 
from the Chargers' perspective here a little bit. Um, they lost to Detroit, okay? But Justin Herbert did all he could to keep his team in the game, and he gave the Lions' defense a lot of fits. Uh, he was 27 of 40, see, 40 balls for 323 yards, one interception in the first quarter, and then he threw four touchdown passes. One touchdown apiece to Jalen Guyton and rookie Quentin Johnston, and two to superstar wide receiver Keenan Allen, who had a real field day with 175 yards on 11 catches. Great day for Keenan Allen. People won fantasy games just by having Keenan Allen. Really? Great day for him. Yes, absolutely. Did he now, get hurt? Hmm? Did he get hurt? Keenan Allen. Oh, I don't think so. Not seriously. Okay. I have to double check that. I'll double check. Yeah, double check that for me because, you know, sometimes guys get dinged and they'll be on the injury report going into the next week and they might have a limited practice or they might sit out practice, but then they're kind of okay. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, every time the Lions took the lead in that game, the Chargers came back to tie the score. Um, scoring touchdowns on their last five drives of the game. So five drives to end the game, they came back and scored touchdowns. Uh, most likely the deciding factor for that game uh, and for Dan Campbell to go for it on fourth down was because Herbert was having such a great game and it was possible that he would have made those five drives, six drives, and actually won the game for them. At the very least, got him in field goal range and take the game in overtime. So we understand why Dan Campbell did what he did. Um, Justin Herbert was that high. As far as the Packers are concerned, Jordan Love was 21 of 40 for 289 yards and two touchdowns. But 40 passes by Love when they only had 24 attempts on the ground in a game that was this close makes no sense to me. With backs like Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, they decided to put the game in Love's hands instead of trying to control the clock and grind out yards, and they lost 23-19. Uh, not smart on their part. Uh, I believe that the Chargers will make another um, trip to uh, enemy territory and go up to Green Bay and beat the Packers. Got to go with the Chargers. Okay. I can understand it. Going with the Chargers. Um, <laughs> again, Chargers' issue is always going to be defense. Yes. We're seventh in offense, 24th defensively and the only thing giving the Packers a little bit of hope here is that the uh, Packers are what 12th defensively mm. giving up 20 points a game but the Chargers are giving up a little bit more 23.9 almost 24 points per game so it's going to be on the defense to keep them in that and see we'll see if uh, how that works out but you're going with the bias Going with the Chargers. Yes, sir. Okie dokie. Buccaneers coming into Levi Stadium to see my beloved 49ers. The bias plus score was 11.5, and it favors the <laughs> my Niners. And, you know... <laughs> Sometimes I take credit when some of these, especially these quarterbacks or somebody, they play really well the week after I said something negative about them. <laughs> <laughs> like Baker Mayfield. <laughs> yeah. Baker Hurton, and he's like, what? I'm going to put money <laughs> up on them guys. <laughs> yeah, I think he heard you. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, Baker made a shambles of the Tennessee secondary. 18 of 29, 278 yards, two touchdowns. He pretty much had his way. And the Tampa Bay defense tortured Will Levis and completely shut down the Titans' run game with 13 quarterback hits, four sacks, 10 tackles for loss. A bunch of them were on Derrick Henry. 
and no touchdowns given up. They won the game 20 to 6. Really nice game by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, I know Desiree enjoyed it. Every time they scored a touchdown, she said, Fire the cannons. Because <laughs> that's what they do when they touch. You know, they got I the, the, remember she's a Bucks fan. So when I Yeah, they got the pirate Bucks. ship up there. And every time they score a touchdown, they fire six they cannons. Fire those cannons off. Yeah, so you got to say fire the cannons when they score. Now, Niners came off the bye with all their starters healthy. And they laid waste to the Jacksonville Jaguars. 34-3. Purdy threw for 296 yards and three touchdowns. Christian McCaffrey ran for 95 yards on 16 carries. That led the ground game. Uh, they produced 144 total yards on the ground. The defense was totally dominant. They shut down the Jags' run game early. Then they went after Trevor Lawrence, 10 quarterback hits, and five sacks. The only sad thing, and I knew it wasn't going to work, McCaffrey scored his touchdown in every single game this season. And he hadn't scored one in that game. And they were in close. And everybody in the stadium knew they were going to try to get the ball to McCaffrey. And the Jags just was not having it. Mm -hmm. And they broke the streak. So <laughs> I, I think if they, if they had made more of an effort to get the ball to him to score a touchdown earlier in the game before it became a thing, Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That that might have made it happen. But but they went with their game plan. They did what was working. Uh they took what the defense gave them. And it didn't become an issue until it got late in the game and he hadn't scored. And by that point, you know, it was kind of late. But anyway, uh gotta take the Niners in this one. I don't think the Bucks are gonna be able to handle that defense at all. Another tough day for Baker coming up. Well, I, I was glad of two, two things. I saw um, Mitchell's name um, pop up a little bit. So they used Elijah Mitchell a little bit more. And like you said, you know, um, Christian had 90-some yards, but they had 140-some overall. So that means they were moving the ball around to a few other people. And Trent was back. Yep. And, uh, they had the infamous highlight where they, were, they, were, they had a, a play where Trenton was pulling. And yeah, pulling the, the Jaguar D back, turned her, turned around and went the other way. <laughs> yeah, of all the injuries, I think we all agreed. I know the folks on TV all agreed that Trent Williams was the most important one. No doubt. I believe it. No doubt. Some people said Debo, but I was like, bro. No, it's about Trent. Trent things ain't going to be right until Trent Williams gets back. That's right. That's right. You get Trent there, you got your left side secured. You can drop back, throw the ball with a little bit more comfort, just a little bit. And that's all yeah. that's all Purdy needed was a little bit more comfort. That's Purdy it. Good win. All right. Going with the bias, going with the Niners, baby. Jets at Bills. Bias plus score 9.3 favors the Bills. Okay. Mm -hmm. What you got? You got Zach, you got Josh, you got Division, you got the Bills, and you got the Jets. And, I, and again, we talked about the coordinator being fired. We'll see how that uh, impacts everything in the special teams. But that was a game the Bills could have won. Absolutely. Both these teams are AFC East teams. They both took losses to AFC West teams. The Jets went down to the Raiders, 16-12. Zach Wilson moved the ball. But for some reason, they just can't seem to find the end zone. The Bills went down to the Denver Broncos, 24-22, mainly because of turnovers. Four total turnovers, three by Josh Allen, two interceptions, and a fumble. Still, they had a chance to win the game when Will Lutz Missed a 41-yard field goal as time expired, but the Bills had 12 men on the field, and Lutz got, Lutz got another chance, and he nailed the 36-yarder after the penalty to get the win for the Denver Broncos. 
as much trouble as the Bills are having, and again, you know, I don't know how things are going to turn out with the new OC. He was the quarterback coach. He's been an OC before, so I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Uh, the, the, the main thing with Buffalo is stop turning the stinking ball over. Other than that, the Jets just seem to be allergic to the end zone. So there's no way I can pick them, especially against a division rival like the Bills. So I'm going to take Buffalo. <laughs> That's funny you say they're allergic to the end zone. Um, it, it brought back, and I'm trying to remember who this was, but it was, it was a story about a coach who had his team walk out to the 50-yard line, kind of walk mm -hmm. around out there in that area. And then he had them go down to the end zone and walk around down there. Mm -hmm. he said, you see the grass in the end zone? <laughs> see the grass out there at the 50-yard line? <laughs> the same kind of grass. <laughs> well, out there in the 50-yard line is dirt. <laughs> <laughs> the grass in this end zone is nice and clean because ain't nobody been there. <laughs> well, when you said allergic to the end zone, it's because the grass is full and green. <laughs> I don't know what the hell they're probably they're not getting in that. They're not getting in that end zone. They ain't, they're not uh, wearing. There's no wear and tear on that grass, man. Not at all. So okay, you going with the Bills, right? All right. Division, 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 NFC West, Seahawks at Rams. Bias plus score 4.8 favors the Seahawks. Tell me something. Are the Seahawks in first place in the NFC West? Are the Seahawks in first place in the NFC West? That is a good question. And I believe as of like last week, they were. Bear with me a second and I'll tell you for sure. Because, um, yeah, I do believe as of last week now with this last win, I don't know how that has turned out. Bear with me a second. And I will let you know that's the NFC West, right? Correct. Well, no, they're not. But it's okay. not because of... Well, let's put it this way. The Seahawks and the Niners are both six and three. Okay. They have the same win percentage. Um, it looks as if I'm trying to see what the biggest difference is. Uh it could be net points. The differential for the Niners is plus one oh nine and for the Seahawks is minus one. <laughs> oh, that might okay. be well, the difference. It Y'all beat the Seahawks head to head already, right? I do believe. <clears throat> okay. All right. That's cool. So uh let's see. Seahawks gotta go to LA to play Rams. Rams are coming off the bye. They should be rested. They should be ready. I think running back Kyron Williams will be back. No, he won't be back till week 12. Uh so they'll probably go with Daryl Henderson. I do believe Stafford will be ready for this game, though. I don't see the I don't see the Niners on the schedule for the Seahawks up to this point. So they didn't. Oh, play they yet. haven't played yet. No. Wow. So that's that's going to be two games coming up at the end of the season that are going to be really tough yeah. for both teams. The Seahawks uh, have the Rams. Then the Niners, then the Cowboys, then the Niners again. Ah, uh, then the Eagles. God, that's rugged. <laughs> no, Cowboys, no, Cowboys, Niners, and Eagles. <laughs> what? Oh, I, 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 I got to check my fantasy teams to get rid of my Seahawks players. <laughs> oh my God! Now, now after gone. that, after that, the last three games they have the Titans, the Steelers, and the Cardinals. So we'll see, but yeah, that's a heck Bro, of a that's a gauntlet, game. man. <laughs> that is a gauntlet. That's rough. Oh my I God. think the only Seahawks I have, I have Lockett on a couple teams, and I got Kenny Walker the third on a couple of teams. Both of them have been playing well for me. I can't complain, but my goodness. Woo! 
Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, well. Anyway, Geno Smith Abdul Sam Howell. I talked about that when I talked about uh, the commanders. And uh, Geno got the, got the win. He was 31 and 47 for a career high. 369 yards and two touchdowns. One of those touchdowns went to Tyler Lockett with 347 left. Then he led two late fourth quarter drives, throwing a 64 yard touchdown pass and run to Kenny Walker III, who I just mentioned. And finally, on the last drive with 52 seconds left, he set up Jason Myers for his fifth and final field goal, which turned out to be the game winner. Good job by Gino. Good job by the Seahawks. This is a tough one because I think uh, Stafford should be back for the Rams. Puka Nakua should be healthy. Cooper Cup is healthy. Uh, I'm not sure about the Rams' run game, though, because uh, they're, they're still missing Kyron Williams, and uh, Daryl Henderson hasn't really showed me a whole lot. With the sense of urgency and how well they played last week, I'm going to take the Seahawks to go into L.A. and beat the Rams. Yeah, they played defensively just a little bit better, just yeah. not just only a couple points better over the last few right. weeks. But, uh, okay, Seahawks. I'm still going to play my Rams players that have a fantasy. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I got to play Puka. Puka. I got to play I got to play Cooper Cup. I can't I can't not play them. <laughs> you know what I mean? They will get their targets, no doubt about it. Right, right, right. Targets. Right, but I don't think they'll do enough to win the game. All right. Vikings at Broncos, Benny. I have this as a potential intriguing game. What? This one? Josh Dobbs, what's he going to do? Come on, man. Are you kidding me? What's he going to do? You got the, you got, hey, Broncos. Come on, on man. You got way better games streak. than this. Win streak. You got, you got a win streak and you got Josh Dobbs doing miraculous stuff with his rocket science brain he got over there. All right, all right. Listen, I I know you're in love with Josh Dobbs. Well, I am I don't too. Know about all that, <laughs> I know I am too. I'm intrigued, <laughs> but I'm intrigued with Josh Dobbs, not this game, <laughs> not the game. Well, the bias plus favorites, the Vikings, five point eight is the score. Oh, uh, they get the. You bias. might not be intrigued with them, but the bias is favoring them again. Broncos, we know where they came from, so you know they're coming in with. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. beat yes. up net points with, you know, their defense and all of that. Josh Dobbs is intriguing. The Denver Broncos are intriguing. But I don't think this game is intriguing. That's just me. Okay. But anyway, the Joshua Dobbs tour continues. Against the Saints, he threw for 268 yards. He threw a touchdown pass, and he ran for a touchdown. He's doing a lot of work with his legs. The guy looks great. Vikings rolled to a 27-3 lead. But after Derek Carr got knocked out of the game with a concussion, Jameis Winston came in and actually started a Saints comeback, a serious comeback. And I know you made fun yeah. of one thing about the pass that he threw, and that's all well and good because at the end of the game, Interceptions did kill them, but he threw two touchdown passes, and the first thing was a freaking thing of beauty to Chris Olave. Coming in cold, off the bench, having not played in months, that pass was beautiful. He threw another great pass to uh, A.T. Perry. After the great comeback attempt, however, he was intercepted twice, once by cornerback Makai Blackman, once by safety Byron Murphy. That spelled the end of uh, things for the Saints. But uh, I was proud of James for coming in cold and showing off a little bit and actually making it a game. 
Now, as far as Denver's concerned, Russell Wilson threw two touchdown passes and Will Lutz kicked field, four field goals. Uh, and the most important one, he missed. But after the Bills had 12 guys on the field, they got penalized. He got a chance to come back in. The kick was a little bit shorter. He actually made the kick and they ended up winning that game. Josh Dobbs goes into Denver and beats the Broncos. <laughs> there. I just took the intrigue out of it. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. There you have it. <laughs> and this is the Sunday night game, Benny. Yep. Sunday night. So we'll get a chance to see this in its full glory. Benny, the lead contender. For intriguing game of the week. Boo! Is the Monday night matchup. I'm going to kill this one for you, too. The Super Bowl rematch. Eagles going to Kansas City. House of Horrors. Bias plus score. Look at this bias, Betty. 0 0.1. Wow. <laughs> Famous the Chiefs. Wow. <laughs> That's why it's a lead contender. <laughs> uh, I can't argue with that. Uh, <laughs> they get the bias. All right. All right. Here's the deal. Both teams are coming off the bias. So we have that situation again like we did last week. The Eagles' last game was a 38-31 to 31 battle with the stinking commanders. The Chiefs' last game was a 24-9 debacle loss to the Denver Broncos. However, you got Andy Reid coming off the bye, oh. where he's almost invincible. Yeah. And they have the bias, and they're at home. I'm taking the Chiefs. Cool. I'm not an Eagles hater. <laughs> I just don't see them going into Kansas City and win in this game. I just don't. Just don't see it, eh? Just don't see it. Well, I don't know, Benny. You, I, I'm, oh man, I, I, I'm thinking Eagles here. I'm thinking yeah. Eagles, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking they're one uh, Philly shove away from winning this game. So, there we go. All right, and that is the Monday night matchup. Da, 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 da. And that wraps up the Bias Plus reports for week 11, 2023. But you know what happens when we wrap up the Bias Plus report, Benny? What happens? Got to have a buster. We have the Bias Plus buster of the week. For week 10, congratulations to the Denver Broncos. Well deserved. Well, well deserved. deserved. Well deserved. And my intriguing game of the week, much less. So, ah, uh, yes, we hit on all cylinders on this one, for sure, for sure. Intriguing game of the week. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, Benny, as uh, Lucille, was it Lucille Ball? Who used to say, I'm so glad we had this time together? That was Joan Rivers. That was Joan Rivers? Really? I think so. No. No, not Joan Rivers. That's Lucille Ball. No, no. Carol, Carol. Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett. <laughs> Showing our age, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Jeez. Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett. Ah, uh, yes. I'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh and sing a song. We didn't sing no songs, Benny, but we did have a few laughs going in with this. Yes, sir. And a few surprises. I will determine it probably will not be the Bengals Ravens, even though I do think that I, I have that highlighted as an intriguing game. I know you're gonna go Eagles Chiefs. I, well, yeah, you know, and, and I can't be Monday, mad at it's Monday night. It's it's I get the it. game of the week. You know? I get it. And it's 0 0.1. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, gee, me Christmas. Holy mackerel. So all right. That wraps it up for Ben and Barry on football. Join us. 
uh, every week as we go over the week's games. Um, and you can find us at www.benandbarryonfootball.com. Benny, before we go, we normally have either rant or something. Sometimes we do social media. Right. I just want to say this. And, and you let me know if you see the same thing. One of my okay. shows that we, one of our shows that we both like is Speak. Yes. Okay. I didn't watch it today. Huh? I didn't watch it today. It's okay. But I watch it a lot. If you can watch it any day of the week, I think you'll see what I'm talking about. I actually turned it off the other day. I'm having a problem with Shady. <laughs> I think somebody told Shady he can just take over the conversation when he wants to. Right. And he's just getting a little carried away with it, man. He's just like dominating things. Yeah. You've seen it too? Yeah. And he's kind of getting on James Jones's nerves too. You think so? I, I, James has been yeah. pretty cool about it, but I don't doubt what you're no, saying. No, he's, he's, I, I have to give James Jones credit. He's being very cool about it, but I think it's starting to bug him. I did watch the show. Uh, now, Acho asked for it either yesterday or the day before when they were talking about, oh, jeez. Ah, they were talking about the players only meeting for the Bills. Did you watch that one? That might be the one I turned off because Shady is so defensive about the teams that he was a part of. That Yes, he is. He's very he modest is. In, in his things that he says. You're absolutely right. However, I agreed with him on this one. Okay. Latavius Murray called the meeting. And, and uh, uh, Acho seemed to have some kind of problem with a – with a players only meeting being called by a player who just arrived on the team. I remember that conversation because they were talking about whether they, whether they would even show up if they didn't respect the person. Right. I remember but that conversation. Shady made it very clear that you don't have to be a veteran of the team. Players respect veterans of the NFL. Good point. Good point. This guy's been around. He's been on a team or two. He played for the Buffalo Bills. He played for, you know, the Saints. He actually had a good game. He actually had a good game. Yes, he and did. he knows when a team is going wrong or going left, and he felt like he needed to speak up. It's not like he's some unsigned, uh, you know, undrafted free agent. Right. Yeah. Who never plays. I mean, he's got a name, Latavius Murray. Exactly. You know. So him and Acho was going, and he was very demonstrative about that. But I understand what you're saying. He's extremely protective about the teams that he's played for. Yeah, yeah. Extremely. I mean, and and he does keeps in the Eagles, man. You know, oh. he got green, red, white, and blue. Yeah, that he's. They really should tell him he needs to calm that down because I understand. I've seen other commentators on other shows say that's my team or I like them or I'm from that city or whatever, but they don't do what he does. Mm. He's, he's over the top. Okay. So he's like, not, we not just me then it's not just, yeah, no, nah, he's talking about we, <laughs> not we bro. It's the Eagles. It's the Eagles. <laughs> yeah, it's not we anymore. You're, you're a fan and you're on television. So you got to calm down. See, if the Giants are doing good and I say we, I can do that. You shouldn't do that. Now, I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm saying he shouldn't do it. Okay. It's too much. All it's right. too much. Well, there you go. I'm glad it's not just me. Any last words from you? No, I'm good. Peace out, everybody. Take it easy. <laughs>